Hey yo, hello, hi, I'm Ghosty, and welcome back to me, the Underworld, and my domain, for yet another video. And again, another video, which you already know by the title, and thumbnail, and pretty much everything, Obi-Wan Kenobi. For this episode, we're looking at episode 5, or part 5, whichever. We're getting pretty close to the finale of the series, and so far I've been loving it, some nitpicks here and there, just some little complaints, but overall, I've been loving the show, and I really do appreciate everything that we've been getting with this show and everything that has to do with it. But now is part five, the second to last episode before the series ends. Uh, sadly, <laughs> I just want more and more, but we have a bunch of other Star Wars content to look forward to, so this is not the end. And this video isn't the end either, because we still have, again, the finale left. But this is part five, and of course, I'm really interested in it, and I'm going to watch it, and obviously, spoiler alert. Uh, Spoiler alert, <laughs> sorry, for part 5 of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and probably the whole show all around. So, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it, I advise you to do, go do so, and come back afterwards, even though I really do appreciate you checking it out regardless. Go watch it, and then come back. But if you watched it, and you're here, hello, hey, I'm gonna go watch it, and I'll come back to you, and I will share all my thoughts, and everything I'm thinking of afterwards. So, I'm gonna go watch it, and I will be right back. God damn! That was a good episode. Holy shit. Alright, great episode. This was an adventure. This was a journey. This was emotional. It was exhilarating. It was a great episode all around. And again, spoiler alert. There's shit in this episode that I don't want you to get spoiled on. And just stuff that you have to see for yourself. <laughs> it's crazy. It was a really good episode. But I this is one that I definitely don't want to spoil for anyone at all. If you haven't seen it, go see it for yourself, because this is, again, another spoiler warning before I talk it, about it and get into it with things. So, again, spoiler warning, you have to see this stuff for yourself. You just have to watch it yourself to see it. I don't want you knowing what's going to happen before going into it. You just have to watch it for yourself. <laughs> that's all. So, that's just spoiler warning. So, now let's talk about it, and I can talk about it all I want. A lot of stuff to talk about, and a lot of things I want to say. So, let's go. Alright, um... <laughs> This is why we love Star Wars, isn't it? Um, Alright, episode starts off with a viewer, like, a, like um, a viewer discussion, kind of like, what's it, what's it called, oh my god, a warning, a viewer discussion warning, which I was like, oh shit, <laughs> we're about to see some crazy shit, we're about to see some blood, we're about to see some gore, we're about to see some, like, sensitive stuff, and obviously we did an episode, it ended up, I, I guess, just seeing the uh, Order 66 flashbacks. But uh, again, a lot of flashbacks in this episode. It starts off with the warning, which I was like, oh shit. I was thinking of that. A million things going through my head for that. What could be and what could happen. Obviously, we saw what happened, but that's that. And then it started off with a Clone Wars flashback, which, <laughs> oh my god. This was a big thing. A lot of people wanted, and I'm glad we got them. A lot of people got their hopes up and really got their expectations a, a little too high for this show, and really expected, like, a little too much out of it, but Clone Wars flashbacks was a thing that a lot of people wanted, and I think was a thing that we were, we were going to get. It's about a lot of, like, factors in the episodes, and in the show as general, a big factor of the show is the relationship between Obi-Wan and Anakin, and obviously we see it in this, and we even see the Clone Wars flashbacks, and oh my god, it's so good seeing it, and <laughs> so many people... Are like complaining how we haven't gotten them and all that. Like what? The, like it just enjoy the show for what it is. I've been loving the show so far, and this is, episode just made it even better. My God, this episode was great. But yeah, the, we get the Clone Wars flashbacks, and the entire time we see the parallel between Obi Wan and Vader, to Obi Wan and Anakin back in the Clone Wars, and it, oh, I think it's really well done. But we see Anakin's like more aggressive side. At, oh my God! Not not even just in this show. Literally anything that has Anakin Skywalker in it, like the prequels, Clone Wars, this, literally anything, there's always these moments that he has that is a little more aggressive and a little more, like, focused from anger. Like, foreshadowing and, like, hinting at his, like, future turn to Vader, which I think is always beautifully done. 
it's always like something to see. It's like bittersweet kind of thing. But it's, as a Star Wars fan, it's, you just love it to see it. And they really show it in this. And he's like a lot more aggressive and he's really just trying to win and take down Obi-Wan instead of you know, Master and Padawan kind of thing. But we got a lot of Vader in this. So happy to say that. But again, it also stays on focus with Obi-Wan. And I think it does a really good job. And then other characters as well. We have Tala. We have Reva. We have everyone. The um, fake Jedi from earlier in the show. We have him. We have a bunch of characters in this. But it really does focus on pretty much every everyone that's involved. And I think it's done and balanced pretty well. Especially between <laughs> Obi-Wan and Vader, like I said. And others we'll get into. But yeah, the show has just gotten a lot of complaints and like unnecessary hate for it. Because people just set their expectations way too high. And they based their whole opinion and thoughts on the show itself. On what they wanted and what they wanted to see. Instead of just opinions about the show, period. People just set their expectations way too high. I'm not sure if it's because of the other, th- other things or just because they want it. Obviously, I, there's things that I want. And I'm satisfied, but I still enjoy the show, and I still, I've been loving it so far. And I can say, if you've seen any of my other Kenobi videos, or in this one, Ghosty did not hate on the show. Some little nitpicks and complaints here and there, or just things I felt were a little off, I've made it clear. But Ghosty did not hate on the show. I can say that now. I did not hate on the show. I loved it, and I'm still loving it. And I'm <laughs> glad I could say that. But again, people just set their expectations way too high. But in this episode... Everything that the people want, everything that anyone wants to see, everything is so enjoyable and lovable about this episode, and it's so well done, I think. Some stuff here and there does feel a little rushed, some scenes or some things I'm watching, and I just look at it, and I think it could be spread out a little more, and just, like, it happens a little quick, pretty much everything. Not everything, but some things and some sequences in the episode happen pretty, like, pretty quick, and I always thought, like, maybe it could have been fleshed out more but uh, again it's a six-part series and they could have you know they did what they could for the episode length and i think they made it work pretty well again at the end i think it was still a damn good episode and maybe even the best one yet and i just think it's funny that it was getting this like hate and complaints and then the next episode drops right after that hate was said and it gives the people what they want and literally what everyone wanted to see but Regardless, I still enjoyed the show. And I, again, this episode was a banger. So let's keep talking about it. But yeah, the, <laughs> the Clone Wars flashbacks. That the entire episode is all well done. Damn, they look good. And they don't look like they aged. They probably used some like de-aging CGI kind of thing. Well, because... I mean, obvious reasons. I don't really need to say why. But they look pretty good. And I really like the parallel between them and them in the current state of the... Kenobi show like that time for, you know the Clone Wars and then to where they're at now I think it's pr- pretty well done and the parallels oh my god it's so poetic and it all has so much meaning and it's so powerful oh, and again this is why we love Star Wars <laughs> isn't it but the entire episode is besides the flashbacks is them just where the Empire trying to get a hold of Kenobi and that's, and that's the whole episode but it's just so fleshed out and I mean, even though I just said some scenes could have been fleshed out more, which I think it could have, but just the whole episode is just the, I'm trying to escape, and it expands over the entire episode. And I said the same thing last episode, but okay, actually, while I'm on that, last episode, I said it was a filler episode, which I was wrong. I, I didn't mean it like a filler episode, but I was trying to make the point that I am... Let me try to make this make sense pretty quickly, because I don't want to spend too much time on this. But I, I know and I'm aware of the public opinion of Star Wars fans and the Star Wars fan base of the show so far. And I know not every episode is going to be this like absolutely crazy shit going on or we're not going to see Revenge of the Sith style fights with Obi-Wan and Vader. And the whole show, the whole plot of the show is about Obi-Wan looking after Luke and Leia. And that's what we got. And the entire episode was about Obi-Wan saving Leia. And we were going to see that happen regardless. We were going to see Obi-Wan save Leia regardless. However they did it, it was going to be a part of the show. And that is, again, the whole plot. It's not just about Obi-Wan and Vader. It's not just about Reva. Even though they dive into all those aspects, they're just really main just side things. The whole plot of the show is really just Obi-Wan hiding out from the Empire as a whole and him looking over Luke and Leia. So we're going to see it happen anyways. And I was trying to make it clear that 
we're not going to see what everyone wants so bad in every episode. And that's all it was. And hopefully that makes sense because I don't want to spend too much time on that. Because again, this video is about episode 5, so we'll keep talking about that. And I don't want to sound like a hypocrite. I just wanted to make that clear that I wasn't hating on it. And I was trying to defend the show. Because I knew the public opinion wasn't going to be good. Because we didn't get that stuff with Vader and like Obi-Wan and flashbacks and all that. Order 66, all that stuff. I knew it wasn't. I knew the episode wasn't that after watching it. And I was trying to make it clear, like that's not what we're, we're gonna get in every episode. So again, it all falls under the lines of people having their expectations too high. And I probably should have explained that more in the last video, but no worries. Let's talk, keep talking about episode five. But yeah, like I said, the entire plot of this episode is Obi Wan still helping Leia. That's what we got. But obviously crazy shit goes on and I dive deeper into every aspect and every character as a whole which I really enjoyed again <laughs> I really enjoyed the episode I love this episode maybe it's just recency bias because I just finished watching it maybe I don't know but the uh, entire thing is just them trying to escape while the Empire homes in on them because that last episode we saw them tracking Obi-Wan and now they find them out and the Empire fully on like embarks in like a breach and they try to get in and try to capture Obi-Wan. And try to kill literally everyone there. But they obviously mainly want Obi-Wan. And again, that just expands over the episode ent entirely. But man, I can't get over the flashbacks. I've started to cut here, but like... The parallels between their training session and like them going at it in the flashback. Which is also, by the way, like live-action Coruscant with Hayden Christensen as Anakin. And Ewan McGregor as... Everyone, it's a, such a good thing to see again. I love it so much. It looks so good, and they look really good too. Like again, they didn't, looks like they didn't age. But uh, no, <laughs> I got off track. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, sorry to cut, but like the parallels between their training session and the movements later on with Vader and how Obi Wan fights, everything is just so well done. I think episode's really well done like, overall. I I can't do nothing but praise it. Besides some stuff, like I said, maybe could have been fleshed out more. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Episode was great. It was amazing regardless. But while the Empire is trying to like break in or whatever, we see that yeah, we see Obi Wan end up talking to her and Oh boy, I don't even know where to begin with this. He talks to Reva and I don't even know did I don't know if I did this. Did I do this? Did I say this? I'm not sure. But I had a theory, and it was much more than just my theory. It was like a whole internet-wide theory that Reva was a, an Order 66 like witness, and she was. Episode made that clear, and they dive into her. And oh, do I say this? Oh my God, I appreciate and love Reva so much more. I'm not sure if I didn't like her before, just because she seemed like it was, she was trying too hard, at, like when she was trying to be angry and intimidating. But my God, she could really act when it comes to emotions. Because the actress kills it in this episode. Reva is great in this episode. And overall around, I just love her and appreciate her character way much more after the seeing this and watching this. I'm not sure if she's going to come back. Because at the end of the episode, she, I guess she didn't really die. Which we'll get into. Yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely get into that. And then a whole sequence later on. But I'm not sure if she'll come back in the next episode. I guess we'll see what happens to her. Probably she will. But for now... Talk on this, and yeah, her, she just has so much emotion, and it seems all really real. And you can even see Obi Wan's guilt, because well, if you didn't understand from the episode, she was an Order sixty six witness, not a victim. When Anakin killed the younglings all the way back in the event of Revenge of the Sith, like during Order sixty six, she was a witness. She was a youngling there, and she made it clear that she hid in the bodies, which she delivered these lines with such raw emotion and really powerful and it's really something that you can't ignore you have to appreciate it no matter what again I think the actrix actually kills it just like Anakin with the younglings <laughs> but besides her because she actually hid in the bodies and she said, she said that she even felt the bodies go cold which oh, Jesus oh my god again it's so like powerful I, there's no other word I could put that in but we get a good hindsight and 
a good view on Reva and her character as a whole and why she's in the dark side to begin with. The whole time she actually wants to get closer to Vader and to actually take him out, which she's kind of delusional for thinking she could take down Vader and even amount to him on any level. And we can see that later in the episode too, which we'll get into again. But she's just <laughs> out of her mind for thinking that. But hey, it doesn't hurt to try. Unless you get impaled, like, you know. But that's her whole point. That's her whole motive. She was there and she watched Anakin slay all her friends and what she had as family. All the other younglings. And she, again, she hid in the bodies. And not only does, it, does that trauma that come with that fuel her power to the dark side. But also her hatred towards Vader channels her power to the dark side. And that's how she became a Sith and Inquisitor to, to begin with. Because of all that. But we get a good hindsight and detailed description of her character and her like origin, basically. And why she's there to begin with. She's trying to get closer to the Vader. And like I said, she's delusional for thinking that she can amount to him on any level. But, again, <laughs> it's wild. But, yeah, she just wants to get high enough in the ranks and get close enough to Vader t to take him out. And that's all it is. And Obi-Wan uses this to his advantage to escape and pin them against each other. Which does work eventually. But man, I just love Reva so much more after this episode. And I think the actress absolutely destroys her role in this in this one. Again, maybe not in the other episodes. I just didn't like her character as much. But in this, whew, she killed it. But then after that, the breach happens once she's like, um, penetrates the door. And she opens it. The whole breach starts happening. Stormtroopers start flooding in. The rebels have to fight back. We see some blaster fire, some gunfire. We got a good gunfight with, of course, Obi Wan's lightsaber, and then Reva's red lightsaber. Pretty cool. I always love. It's not really in the scene, but like that's like the brightest things in the room. And whenever the lighting is done with lightsabers, I always love it and I always geek over it. I just I just think it's a really like creative and really good choice to do. It wasn't really the only thing in this, but I just wanted to. <laughs> say that I love that so much, but in this, it's not how it is. And they're chasing Obi Wan, and obviously the whole gunfight breaks out. And man, stormtroopers really do have the worst aim ever. Like they're point blank range to all these people and Obi Wan, and <laughs> they're not hitting anyone. They do hit someone, which we'll about to get into. But man, they need better training or, <laughs> or something. I don't know, but. Obi-Wan doesn't even have to, like, deflect all of it, because he could just watch the blaster fire go right by him. <laughs> it's, like, that bad. It's still a cool scene, and it still hit. Literally, the entire episode, I think I was on the edge of my seat. Since the very beginning. The warning came, which I probably should have known what that was for. The Order 66 flashbacks, obviously. Uh, but, jeez. But, yeah, that happens. And then, they're in the tunnels, and Reva's going after them. And then the stormtroopers are all flooding in, like I said. But then we see Tala, and I should have saw it coming. I really should have, because she talks to Obi Wan about like how she's been feeling and how a light will come and like hope will come, and the Empire won't stay in this like sort of like state of power forever. And basically, all that like nonsense about just the Empire needs to be stopped, all that stuff, and the re the rebellion will grow and. It won't be like this forever, that kind of thing. She has this like meaningful talk with him, so I should have guessed she was going to hit the dust, and I should have guessed she was going to die, but she gets the gunshot wound, and she ends up sacrificing herself, and we get a pretty powerful scene. It's a pretty sad scene, and she actually did have an impact on me. I actually liked the character a lot. Not sure if I said that already, but each episode, the more you saw her, the more you, you liked her, or at least for me, that's how it was. The more I saw her each episode, the more I liked her. And she just got better overall, each scene that she was in. And I just, I grew at, I, I did grow attached to her. Well, maybe not attached, but I grew to like her more and more, the more I saw her. So it was hit, hard-hitting scene, and it was a good scene. Powerful scene. But, surprisingly, Tala's death isn't what got me in that scene, weirdly enough. Even after that, like, emotional and, like, heart from the heart speech that she had to Obi-Wan. That's not what got me. That's not... The scene was hard-hitting, like I said, and it did get, it did get me. But... Like, I got... The, I got It was getting my emotions out. But it's not her or her death that got me. 
obviously she did a very noble thing and she ended up sacrificing herself so everyone could escape and she could save it back and hold off the empire so she had, well, she went out in a blaze of glory and I respected it and it was pretty noble of her she was going to die either way because she had the gunshot wound she had like the blaster wound and if she, even without that she you know blew herself up but again that's not what got me in that scene she didn't, that's not what fully it really got my emotions the thing that got me in this scene was the goddamn droid that <laughs> blocked all the blaster fire from her. All these stormtroopers are actually finally hitting their target, and it's all on one target, and it's her in the middle of like the cave that they're in. But the droid is standing in front of her, tanking all these blaster fires and all these hits from behind, and and it's like bam, boom. Each hit, each blaster fire, each blast hitting him is depowering him and like decommissioning him more and more to the point where he's powered off and he's broken down and it, he basically dies. Whatever it is, the droid it, it it gets powered down and it gets broken thanks to all the blaster fire and they they destroy him basically. And that's what got me. I don't know if it was because of the score, like the music that was playing in the background, or just her reaction to it. Or just the droid itself doing what it was doing. I'm not, I'm not sure. But, man, this, this droid is the MVP of the show. Ever since it was, it was like, debuted. Man, RIP the droid. That's what got me in the scene. <laughs> that was the most, like, emotional I got from that scene. I don't know why that got me out of everything. Just the droid doing what it was doing really got to me. I don't know why. But it was just so depressing. Very noble thing, not only what the droid did, but also Tyler, like I said, she went out in a blaze of glory, or a blaze of fire, I guess, and a huge explosion for the bomb, which I don't know why she didn't just throw it, because, I mean, again, yeah, regardless, she was going to die anyways, so it doesn't really matter, but again, hard-hitting scene, and that happened, and it's even worse when you see Obi-Wan's reaction to it, and the grief that he has for not being able to protect her and save her. Obi Wan just suffers. That's uh, this entire show, man. It really is. But if you incorporate that whole scene, it's a hard hitting scene. It's emotional. It's powerful, and I always say that in these talks, powerful and how meaningful things is. But it really is. Like I always say, like the same thing. But I don't mean to like repeat myself. But that really is the best way I could word it, and the best way I can actually explain it. And I, the things I watch and the things I'm interested in. A lot of things do have care and effort put into it, so a lot of emotion gets brought out of it, and a lot of, like, again, like impactful and powerful things come out of it, so I always have to talk about it. I can't ignore it, because I love it so much, so that's that. R.I.P. Tala and R.I.P. The Droid, which I don't even know the name of, <laughs> but it was a hard-hitting scene, like I said, and it was pretty good. The whole episode is great, I think, but the whole time that's got going, the whole, everything we, we see with Leia... Is Obi Wan just trying to protect her and her actually rewiring the circuits to make sure the um, the gates open because she's fixing them and whatnot? And there's also a scene in there that Obi Wan talks to like the entire crowd and like says like they have to come up with a plan and how they're kind of screwed. They need to figure out something quick. And Obi Wan speaks to everyone. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was watching it, I was noticing that Obi Wan was giving the speech and like guiding everyone, making up a plan basically. And I honestly thought. Leia was going to be the one to do that speech and kind of like foreshadow her leadership skills. But we, oh, we also have Kenobi, which was obviously General Kenobi before. So it made sense. And it was still overall around a good scene. And they needed to, to, to do it anyways. They needed to make up a plan and do something because they were in the, you know, desperate need of help. So we have that. And there's not much to talk about Leia in this episode. So we'll get past that and move on to the next. After all that, a little bit after all these scenes... We see Obi-Wan surrender himself to the Empire, as you all seen in the episode. And, well, he's he just surrenders, and he hands himself in. But he knows that him and Reva has a mutual enemy, which that enemy does come down. And we see so much with him in this episode. Not only the Clone Wars flashbacks that parallels to the scenes in this episode, and the, like, the current times, which again, is so brilliantly done. I love it. But we see him come down, and of course, that is Darth Vader. And oh my god, he is 
Vader. There's not much to say. There's not much to explain. That You should know exactly what I'm talking about. He is Vader. And this is exactly what I was talking about before in other videos about this is the Darth Vader I think he should be portrayed as all the time. This unstoppable, imaginably, like, overwhelmingly powerful thing that doesn't seem human. This like overwhelmingly, unimaginably powerful Dark Lord. And that's exactly what he is. And that's how he's been portrayed in the show so far. And I am in love with it. Especially in this episode. And it seems like everything outside of the original trilogy... Don't get me wrong, I love the original trilogy a lot. It's my favorite trilogy out of all of them. But I'm just saying, because, you know, that was older, that, those were the original movies. They're called original for a reason, and they're older movies. So we didn't have all that, like, flashy stuff as much as we do now. But anything outside of the original trilogy, Darth Vader is upped up even more and upped a notch every time we see him. And I love it. <laughs> we see more Vader, and we see more of just Vader and how menacingly powerful he is and how much of an impact he has just in general outside of the original trilogy and I, every time he comes up anytime anyone uses them outside of the original trilogy they always up him up a notch and it's always done really well but in this <laughs> oh boy in this he comes down to get Obi-Wan for himself and he see Obi-Wan's escape and he just he, he oh my <laughs> Obviously, you could tell that he's, like, very, like, on top of Obi-Wan, and he's very, like, intrigued, and he is on Obi-Wan. He is, like, dedicated and has his eyes set on Obi-Wan the entire show, and especially in the scene, he's just walking through the caves, and you can just feel it, and it's such a special feeling. Oh, my God, I just love Vader, man. And he ends up getting through the caves and through the, all the bodies that are laying around stormtroopers and what should be rebels i feel like but stormtroopers were missing the shots a lot and they tried to make everyone survive besides the one that really mattered but vader gets through and oh my god this was so fucking awesome man vader comes in and the ship they had the gates open by now because leia and everyone's on board and they we see the ship trying to escape and we see it flying vader comes in and notices, and Vader comes in and stops it with the Force and holds the ship down while it's using all of its strength to boost off and leave the planet and just fly off. And Vader uses the Force to hold it back. And we get one of the sickest shots I think I've ever seen and probably the sickest shot in the show. Or just the coolest scene in general. This whole episode has really no complaints. It just has so many good moments and everything shines in it from the beginning to end. It's just, whew. But Vader fully on like just holds the ship in place and brings it down with the force and it is so fucking badass i can't even put it into words and then it's it's even cooler when you know he's like bloodthirsty you know he is, wants to kill you know he has his eyes set on everyone and he doesn't care what happened and what he has to do to get to that point so he is fully on like has his his target set and will do anything in it and will <laughs> slay down anything in his way so he brings the ship down, and he rips it. He uses the force still, but he rips it down, and he absolutely just tears it open with the force. And it is so cool because he is just so powerful and so menacing, and it's just so well done. And I think it looks absolutely great. Vader is just <laughs> I I don't even know how to explain it. I'm trying to think of the words to put it in, and I just can't. But Vader is just so badass, and the scene is just so like <laughs> menacing. He is just. He is menacing, period. That's how he is, and that's what the scene is, and it displays it perfectly. And it wasn't even that ship. He pulls it down, he tears it open, and the other ship behind this ship, they used it as like a decoy. The other ship flies off and leaves, and Vader notices, and he can't quite get it in time. But my god, that scene with like the decoy ship is so sick, and god damn. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by now, by my reaction to it, I had to smile from ear to ear the entire time watching this ending sequence. I mean, pretty much the whole episode. But this got me on the edge of my seat. And I was really like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> it's happening. And the whole time, I know this happens in every single scene Darth Vader's in. But just the breathing overall finishes and completes everything. Whenever, whatever scene he's in, it always completes it. It always just, it's like a cherry on top. <laughs> it's Vader. And you can't not love it. That's like all it is. And then we get even more flashbacks to the Clone Wars, and it really shows the parallel between Obi-Wan and Anakin, and now what's going to happen, Vader and Reva. 
and basically Obi Wan like trying to guide Anakin in the fight that they like the training session that they had, and just they have a really good parallel between that and the Obi Wan uses the Force in the Clone Wars flashback or whatever to actually fight, and he prevails. And <laughs> Vader does the same thing with Reva, and holy shit, it is such a cool scene. Again, it's a perfect display of how powerful and menacingly, like, unstoppable Vader is, and it's a perfect display of that. Which goes right into the next scene of exactly that. Vader versus Reva. Which is, shouldn't, isn't really a fight. It's just Reva trying to attack and slay down Vader. Obviously it doesn't work. Like I said earlier, she was kind of delusional for thinking that she could even take him down or has a chance to take him down. But we see that, and Vader absolutely overwhelms her and absolutely, like, is over her and better than her in every aspect of the fight. And just in general, he's Darth Vader. That's all the explanation I need. But he's using what he what Obi Wan did, which is a, again a really good parallel between the Clone Wars flashbacks and what's happening in the current time. And he's using the Force and just dodging Reva's attacks. He doesn't have to use his lightsaber, and he just <laughs> power like overpowers her the entire fight, and she stands no chance. And my God, it's such a cool ass scene. And again, with the flashbacks, it's so like incredibly well done because it's uh, the flashbacks go around the entire episode, and it even matches with how Vader fights Reva and how Obi Wan dealt with Anakin in the flashback, and it just frames the whole episode so of like the story with the training session and like everything going on and the relationships and like the the main relationship and just the whole like story of the episode matches the flashbacks and I think it's so well done. But we have Vader versus Reva, which really isn't much of a fight again. It's just Reva's attempt at an attack on Invader and the whole time he just overpowers her and basically is just better than her in every aspect and every way possible. <laughs> Like, it just, it's not even a fight, it's more of just her attempt at an attack on him, like I just said. And it's a really badass scene. And you can just feel Vader, and the power that he has in general, and p the power over her. And it's a perfect display of that, and I think it's really well done. He ends up breaking her lightsaber in half, which was pretty damn cool. I didn't think he would be so, like, merciful, because, well, he gives the lightsaber back to her, at, like, a fair, like, even kind of battle and they like, put him on the same level even though they're not on the same level whatsoever he still gives the lightsaber back to her for them to actually fight it out and duel it out with lightsabers so that's what I mean what, like but at the same time well because he's probably you know beyond pissed Obi-Wan and because her working with Obi-Wan and actually trying to like go after him obviously but then again I guess he kind of feels where she's coming from because he knows his fair share of what he thought as betrayal and anger and all that. So he could probably tell where she's coming from. So maybe that's why. But regardless, it was still a badass sequence. And then we still even have the Clone Wars flashbacks. And how Obi-Wan was the master. And how Anakin has come all this, all this way. And now he's Darth Vader. And he's much more powerful than imaginable. And he's came a long way. And now he's just... Now he's Darth Vader. <laughs> I don't need much of an ex explanation. But then we see Vader full on stab her. Just like she saw way back when in Order 66 when she saw the same person slay all of her friends and family. And we get a little good like flashback to that as he stabs Reva. And honestly, I thought she was going to die. I thought she was done for. I thought I expected like a really brutal death. I don't know why. I thought he was going to pull out with the force and pull her into his lightsaber while stabbing her, but we didn't see that. We saw the flashback like comparison of Vader just stabbing her, just like how he did with the young ones before in her flashback. And regardless, he defeats her. And then we see the Grand Inquisitor survived, the actual Grand Inquisitor, not her, survive. And I mean, I'm pretty sure we all saw this coming. We didn't know if Vader was going to kill her or the Inquisitor, but we all knew and speculated that she was going to die regardless. But now we see that it was Vader that did it, but the Inquisitor is alive and he's still kicking. So, well, it was obvious because he's in Rebels and that takes place after the show. So it was pretty obvious and it was known that he was going to survive the attack that she did on him. But we see him again and we see them leave after Reva's done and left her dead. Thing is, Obi-Wan and Leia all leave and we see that, but... Viva isn't actually dead. 
I'm not sure how this is going to come into play because you kind of just betrayed Vader and the entire Empire by trying to attack Vader. But we see that she picked up like the hologram device that Obi-Wan left behind. Or not really left behind. He gave it to the fake Jedi. I don't know his name, but he gave it to the fake Jedi. And then the fake Jedi dropped it. And we have the next episode to blame all on him. <laughs> but we see that and then... They know that Luke is there. Not Luke, but they know a child is on Tatooine that is strong and that Obi-Wan was protecting. So maybe Reva will go back to the Empire and go back to Vader, or she'll go there herself. I'm not sure. But that was that. A friend just invited me, or he invited me to an Xbox party to talk about Kenobi even more. So I'm going to go do that because, well, I think this is the end of the video. And I think I shared all my thoughts. Again, I'm not sure where we're going to go next. With the next episode, it could go a bunch of different ways, but we'll see next episode. But this was this episode. This was part five, and my god, it was a good-ass episode. The parallels between the current times and the Clone Wars flashbacks. Reva in this, Leia in this, Obi-Wan in this. Obviously, Darth Vader in this. The emotion and pain that comes with this episode. Everything is so well done, and I think this one really shines. Possibly, it might be the best episode yet, and best episode out. But I think the finale does have potential to take over. We'll have to see it next week. But for now, thank you for joining me on this episode and this video. I appreciate it greatly. And subscribe, like, comment, etc., etc., share if you can. Please and thank you. And again, that's all. If you want, I want to see my other Kenobi videos, they're already up on the channel. So you can check them out anytime. But again, thank you for watching. This has been Ghosty, and I bid you all farewell.